social media, kind of very powerful. We, we, we talk about it in VTech and, and business management. We talk about digital marketing. We know it's very powerful. So we'll look at the positives of digital marketing and positives of social media. We'll also go through and have a look at the negatives. So, interesting. Does this look familiar? I thought we'd open by, how do I say this? I have a seven-year-old and a 19-month-old. My 19-month-old is learning to feed herself. And she only eats when Baby Shark is being played. And, and it was really annoying. Social media, you know, um, breakdown of communication. Unfortunately, Generation Z does get a bad name. I, sh I shouldn't say that, but this is from the Bangkok Press. Uh, post, sorry. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting. Um, I, I, I always carry some cash on me. Yeah, I do use technology, we embrace it, we use it in our teaching and learning as teachers. But I think um, it's really important, I think, this is a really common sight. And I come in this morning, and out of respect for my students, I come in, 6.30, my son and I, we go up to my room, do some planning. 7.30, I went downstairs. It was like this, everyone was on their computers, everyone was not looking. I said good morning to some students, and they said hello, but they kind of then went back to their social media. And it's really sad that social media is so powerful, but sometimes I think we do overuse it. So what I want to do today is just go through some of the benefits, but some of the downfalls, and maybe we need to just set some guidelines, and hopefully that's, that's going to be helpful in, in breaking through these barriers. I was talking to my year 10s, I've got two year 10s, and they were saying, Mr. Mounter, we go home in the evening, use four hours of social media. Now, social media can be good, obviously, it's very powerful, like we said, but sometimes we can get distracted. I know that if I use social media, you know, four hours is a lot. So maybe we need to, as a parent, I'm now a parent, like I said, I've got young children, your young students, hopefully maybe go for a walk and we'll have a look at some other areas we can look at. So it's really important, I think, that we, you know, we're having that kind of breakdown of traditional communication. I do think it's important, yes, we need to embrace social media. Generation Z, if you don't know who Generation Z is, I'll go through it in a moment. But I think we do need to kind of set some guidelines. As a parent, as my children get older, hopefully, um, you know, I can be a good parent, be responsible. Like, I'll go home tonight, I'll be tired, but I'd like to see my kids, have a play with them. Um, I think as parents, we do need to be responsible. And, and you as young adults, um, again, use social media, but there's a time and place. So it's really important, we're talking about breaking through barriers, you know, we, we talk about sustainability here at school, equity, um, inclusion, they're really important. Um, these, these things weren't talked about when I was at school. You know, I, think, I think we still need to set some guidelines, possibly, would be the word for social media use. If you're not sure, um, here's kind of a little generations chart. Now, we probably don't have any baby boomers in the room. So myself, probably some of the teachers sitting down the front, probably Generation Z. But if you have a look there, Generation Z, I'm 78, right? So I'm on the edge of Generation Z. Generation Y, interesting. Freedom, work, we sometimes call them millennials. You might hear that word, millennials. Um, sometimes get a bad rap in the media, not good. And then you've got that Generation Z, born after 1995, interesting. That would be the majority of our students in the room. Like FaceTime, obviously social media, and obviously, I, I'm, I'm more, do like my personal computer at home. I prefer email, I love email. People wanna get in touch with me, email me. So there's just a little breakdown on that society. Um, if you're born after 2015, I did some research, you're actually what we call an alpha. It was really interesting. So when you look at a generation, you're looking at about 20, 25 years. So sometimes this, when we look at it, um, I always talk to my students in class, I'll say Generation Z. If, if you're not sure, just hopefully that breaks it down for my presentation. Um, obviously, you know, you're very tech savvy, Generation Z and uh, Generation Y. My generation, 1997, I was at university. A lot of the teachers down the front row can probably remember this. We had to teach ourselves computers and we'd click on the icon and the old dial up, it was very slow, the internet. So, so times really have changed. Um, but when we look at social media, I think we all know what it is. Communicating through virtual networks, things like LinkedIn. I use that for, for um, school, professional networking. Um, YouTube, Twitter. My pet hate is uh, TikTok. But again, um, there are good and bad associated with that social media. Um, obviously, 4.7 billion people around the world use social media. 60% of the world's population. That's interesting. So social media is extremely powerful. As a business owner, you know, you can use social media, digital marketing, click per minute, engage, click per engagement. It's very powerful and really important for a business owner. But again, like I said, as a young student, there are also, we need to look at how much you use the internet. You also need to look at using the internet and social media responsibly. So the bright side, 
public relations. I love marketing. Public relations is great. You've got a new product, you can obviously sell it. Um, improve your marketing. We have what we call cost per click. You can look at cost per engagement. Every time someone goes onto your website and buys something, you can get instant feedback. Now, as a business manager, that is gold. Our traditional P's in marketing are product, place, price, and promotion. We might need to wait for a quarter every three months to look at our sales data. By looking at Instagram, you know, if you're selling something on Instagram, uh, Twitter, you can get instant feedback. So as a business, as a marketer, we need to embrace social media. Social media is very powerful. User-generated content like influencers. I'm still trying to kind of figure out what an influencer is. Um, but again, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Consumer-generated intellectual property. So it's quite powerful, as you can see. Sharing, presence, relationships, um, building up your social media network. Most of you, when you apply for a job, a lot of you do business, economics, um, you look at recruitment. You know, it's very powerful social media. So when we break that down, it gives you an identity. Now that's why a lot of people use social media. It gives us that identity. So there's some of the positives of social media. I suppose we're getting now to the interesting, the, 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 the important part of my presentation, the dark side. Unfortunately, social media has caused many problems over the years. And I suppose here at school, um, cyberbullying, in your private lives, you need to be very careful. So we'll just have a look at that dark side of social media. Um, shaming, cyberbullying. Unfortunately, these are issues that we need, do need to discuss. Online witch hunts. Um, that means where people kind of name and shame you. I don't like to mention Donald Trump. Um, he obviously does have a bad name, but you know, he could be maybe, you know, his name might be mentioned all the time and you could get like a bad, bad reputation. It's before a court of law that, you know, the court of law decides if you're a criminal, in a civil criminal case, you have to be very careful. Addictive, use fear of missing out. We call that FOMO in business and management or in economics. Um, that addictive use is, is probably the big problem with young people. Privacy, privacy like we said, if you post your passport, you post your license online, you unfortunately can open yourself up to some harsh criticism, if not fraud, identity theft. So be very careful, especially talking to the students here. As you go through life, use social media, but try to use it within the framework or guidelines we, we use here at school. Fake news, that's an interesting one. Um, we have, I'm Australian, we had an election last year. Um, we've got a new government. But fake news can be presented and brought in an election. Now, overnight, the UK actually had elections for local government. So again, fake news can spread. So we have to be very careful what is reported and what is shared on social media. So just, just be careful, okay? Um, I'm not saying don't use social media. I'm just trying to give you an outline of that. Fake profiles and bots. So when we look at that, fake news is a big problem. And I know Facebook, um, has been cracking down on that a lot more. My generation, it's really interesting. Generation X uses Facebook. Interesting. Good for keeping you know, personal memories of your children, maybe a family event. Um, young people, Generation Z, young people in the room, you like Instagram. It's very interesting, the dynamics of social media and how we like and, in, and use different things. Fake profiles and bots are obviously problems too. So just, just be careful. I think. We, we need to be mature and responsible, and, and when we get to the end of the presentation, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Social media and abuse of work. I found this article, I talked to my class about it. Um, this was in Australia, it was back in March, for memory. This young guy was working in a bar, and there weren't any customers in the, um, in the bar at the time, so he, he decided to get his phone out. Now he was just playing on social media. Now, the boss docked in pay, and there's a pay and earnings down the bottom, you can see where he's being docked, and then he kind of walked away from the job. But as you can see, social media can be a distraction. I know here at school, I try to keep my phone off when I'm teaching, put it away, don't get it out during class, I need to be professional. Same with you when you're in class, you know, you should not be using your phone if you're a student. If you're a teacher, again, there's a time and a place. But when you're at work and you're a young person or an older person, right? I suppose this caused a lot of controversy um, with the social media abuse. Possibly the guy could have cleaned some glasses, went and wiped some tables. I, I, I don't know, it's a difficult one, isn't it? But to dock in pay, I don't know if that was the most ethical thing to do. We're talking about breaking boundaries, you know, going, um, and ethics is very important. But um, yeah, I was just trying to share some different issues with you. So there's a source there for you. Posting personal details online. Now this is where you need to be very careful. Um, especially like our year 10, if we've got some younger members in the audience, you need to be very careful. Don't post your passport 
driver's license, obviously for older people, ID card, um, in Indonesia you have an ID card. Don't, don't post those type of things online. Got there, just found a little thing like fake jobs, scams. You've got to be very careful. You know, um, obviously that's another topic, but you need to be very careful what you post online. If you give people information, they will use that. Identity theft is massive. David Beckham, a few years ago, him and Victoria were on holidays. They were posting, you know, they've showed pictures of their house, beautiful house in, in London. And I believe they own a house in Cheshire too. Former United player, Man United, most of you probably know of him. Um, you know, showing all these exquisite lawns and beautiful diamond rings, etc. Beautiful diamonds in the house. He then posted when he was in Dubai, well, while he was online, I'm away. What do you think happened? While he was away, he got robbed. So be very careful. Don't post pictures of your private life, sometimes online. If you want to show your family holiday to, you know, Bali, maybe do it when you get back. Don't post and let people know your location while you're away. You're opening yourself up to being robbed, so be very careful, okay? Be very careful of what you post online. He's a guy that worked at Facebook, uh, Charmouth. He kind of believes that he should have kind of looked at what he was posting. Artificial intelligence, chat GTP is probably going to be, as a teacher, the other teachers in the room can probably agree with me, it's probably going to be our biggest challenge over the next 12 to 24 months, making sure people aren't cheating. And you as a student, you can use chat GTP, but obviously try to use it responsibly. Okay, it still have to, you have to sign that work. So again, all these ethical issues. And, and chat GTP, AI, that's a topic for another discussion, but just be careful, okay? Using social media to connect with friends, like we said, Try not, to, try not to turn on your location, like I said. If you're away on holidays, maybe post, but don't let people know you're away. I think one of the big problems I find is um, I feel our, our critical thinking and our reflective thinking skills have probably dropped with the emergence of social media. Again, we can argue to agree to disagree, but yeah, just be careful. Um, hopefully, if you do use social media, like I said, use it within that framework, use it responsibly. As you can see there, Reddit users are um, posting a kidney. They thought it was a scam. The person then received death threat. So just be very careful what you post online. We're talking about fake jobs. I had a friend and he'd been abroad for 10 years. He actually applied for a job. And it was a fake scam through an international school. Fake HR resources team. He didn't do his research. Be very careful. Um, like I said, use social media, use it responsibly. Try not to lead your life on it. Try to, you know, make sure we use it responsibly. Chatbots, again, can mimic human behavior. We talked about AI, misleading spam, misleading advertisements. So we just need to be careful, okay? Obviously Microsoft have theirs. Uh, they released Tay in 2016 to engage with millennials. It, it, um, some of the users tricked the chatbot into learning and making racist mistakes. Now that's not really good, okay? We live in a world of quality. We want good ethics. We want global citizenship. So when you're trying to teach AI, that or social media, it's not good for society. So again, we do need to have some rules, I think, when we engage with social media. Just be very careful. Sharing of content, receiving content, inappropriate content. We talked about Donald Trump. Obviously, he's got his legal issues at the moment, but again, we shouldn't be spreading fake news. If, if, if you don't like someone, obviously, don't talk to them, right? Um, be responsible. Um, don't, 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 don't make information up. That's really important, okay? Obviously, there's some information there, making sure you're sharing. When you share information, make sure you have permission to take people's photos, and obviously, you have that permission to share the content. I would have liked to have taken a picture today, but I didn't have permission to take a picture of 50 people on their electronic devices, okay? I can't do that, that's, that's not fair. I would have had to go and ask everyone, get permission from your parents, you're a minor, get consent. So I didn't take the picture, okay? But again, when we're looking at it, just be careful. When you look at the news, be very careful what you see on Facebook, Instagram, Always go and do a little bit of extra research. We don't want fake news, okay? So just be very careful. Sharing inappropriate distribution of content. There's some little bit on information. Property infringement, I won't go into that intellectual property. Intellectual property is where you use someone else's idea, okay? Some countries it's enforced, some it isn't. So we just need to be careful. Location tracking we talked about. Don't, don't have your tracking data on. As you know, Google is constantly monitoring you. Every time you log into your email account, every time you use Google Maps, be very careful. Google is building algorithms. Instagram do it. The content that you look at on your, on your profile, they're building algorithms. So again, just be very careful what you share, what you distribute on 
the internet. When you apply for universities, Ivy League, if you're going to the best Russell Group universities in the UK, they're going to actually check your social media profile. A lot of the top jobs, when you're getting headhunted today, they will check your profile. Just be very careful, okay? Yes, they'll check your references, make sure you're, you know, check your degrees, they, they can be verified. They will also check your social media status. Like we said, you know, don't post anything rude, racist, extreme, crude, vulgar. If you've got those type of views, keep them to yourself. They will check your history. Be very careful. Kind of think about it. If you're not sure, maybe ask mum and dad, have a chat to your older brothers and sisters, have a chat to your teachers. Cyberbullying. 10 to 40% of victims have been cyberbullied. I've never been cyberbullied, but I would hope it doesn't happen to my children. I hope people in the room haven't had it happen, but it does happen. So again, usually young people engage in that social media. So we're talking about millennials, people probably, you know, 20 to 35, Generation Z, most of your generation, the younger children in the room. You know, so we, we have that threat, coercion, intimidation. So just be careful. Again, you know, don't share your credit card details. Don't, don't add people on Instagram that you don't know. Could be a bot, it could be someone who could be a stalker. Just be careful. 40% of those who were cyberbullied reported that they had do so for fun. Don't, don't do that online. I think there's a time and a place not to do that, right? Don't, if you don't want to talk to someone, just don't do it. Simple. So unfortunately there, you know, defamation. Be very careful too. I had a friend who wasn't very happy with a real estate agent in Australia. He posted something on Facebook. Guess what? Something quite rude. He said the customer service was poor. He was then taken to court. He was sued for defamation in a civil lawsuit. He actually had to pay $50,000, $52,000 Australian. You have that digital footprint, okay? Even if you delete your Instagram account, if you delete your um, TikTok account, that digital footprint is still there. Be very mindful. Just quickly before I wrap up, um, I think it's really important that we do talk about the positives of social media. Digital marketing is a massive business. Google will pay you $250,000. If you get a job at Google, you know, that's been headhunted, you, you, you're set for a long time. I think students and parents should limit social media each day. As you know, when you're watching different things on TikTok, people can just sit there for hours and hours. That's not good. You know, we don't want the breakdown of society. We're trying to break through barriers. This is the whole concept of this talk. Think about, obviously, using social media, using it responsibly, business applications, use your social media. Yeah, it's great, you know. Do you know the best part of my day? Go home tonight open the door, get to see my kids, give them a hug. That's the best part of my day. I love teaching here at school. So again, if I sit on social media all day, I'm not gonna be a good father, I'm not gonna be a good parent. So do think about that and I think, um, yeah, all is good. Don't post your whole life online, okay? It may come back to haunt you in the future. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you about social media.